It's time for these pheasants to start nesting. Ow! Here you go. I'm just coming through to the wildflower meadow field and look down here, some teeny tiny little hooves of a mumpjack deer. So now the weather has warmed up considerably, it's time to sort out these aviaries and make sure that the hen pheasants have nesting material and a space to lay their eggs. So these guys are Reeves pheasants and they're part of our ornamental pheasantry here at Brimwood Farm. There were two females in here, but Saad actually recently switched the hens. So there's now a hen and a cock in here. And then there's also now a hen and a cockerel in here. So we've got two breeding pairs and we need to make sure that they are ready to start laying eggs. Hello. Now Reeves pheasants are a ground nesting pheasant. Not all pheasants are, so make sure you research the variety because you may need to put a nest box up higher. Um, but for this operation, we're just having, we've just got a little nest box down here. And then in the aviary next door, we're just gonna put in a cat box with straw. Now once the trees have got a few leaves on them, I'll also cut some branches and bring them in here and just shelter them over the top of the, uh, the boxes. However, we don't actually want our hens to sit on the eggs. We want to take the eggs to incubate and we want to take the eggs to sell. So if we wanted our hens to actually hunker down and incubate the eggs themselves, they would need quite a bit more seclusion. Um, so they weren't disturbed by us coming in and out and feeding. Um, and in that case, we would get a lot more foliage, some branches, maybe some um, old fern leaves and things, and just cover the entrances to those boxes so they felt secluded and safe. Now, Reeves pheasants are quite a common pheasant and they're fairly domesticated. So in terms of breeding in nest boxes, um, they really only need a little cat box or a little um, place in the corner with some straw in it, and they'll ha quite happily lay eggs. With rarer species, that aren't as domesticated, you often need to create more hidey holes and crevices uh, for them to make their nests and lay their eggs. Another sign they want to uh, nest is, not only are they quite noisy, but I'm being stalked. This chap is quite ferocious <laughs> and you can see the way he's puffing out.
Um, you quite all right down there? Sometimes you've got to remember just to stop uh, and sit. And the, the weather's nice and warm today. The birds are singing in the hedgerows. And just sitting here, I've seen bees. I've seen the first butterfly of the year, a peacock. There's spiders and creepy crawlies coming out of the grass. And I'm watching the sheep. So I was driving home last night and I found this absolutely beautiful ringneck pheasant uh, roadkill. Um, so I obviously I stopped the car and I picked it up and I was going to take it home for sad to taxidermy. However, although this side is very, very pretty, this side is not. Um, and when the skin's gone, obviously he can't skin it. So I'm going to feed it to Duke. Now, of course, there's a couple of important things to remember if you're finding wild, dead animals and feeding them to your ferrets um, or any other animals. Um, and that's disease and poison. Now, because this chap is roadkill, I'm fairly sure it's not disease. Obviously, we do have avian flu in the country at the moment, um, but he looks very healthy. If he had avian flu and he died from that, um, there'd have been all sorts of mucus and stuff around his eyes. This looks like a pheasant in prime condition that was just hit by a car. The other thing is poison. Again, a roadkill less likely to be poisoned. I would never feed Duke any um, rodents from my farm because although um, I don't use any poison, my neighbours do and you wouldn't want to feed uh, a, a poisoned animal to my ferret because then he would be poisoned. So just beware of disease and poison when it comes to those things. But without further ado, Duke is, Duke is ready and waiting. So we're gonna go and feed him. One other little hatching update is those Ixworth eggs that I collected and popped into the incubator. Uh, it is day seven today and I had a look last night and none of them seemed to have developed. And what I think has happened is that it got so cold that not only did the eggs that were out in the open freeze solid and crack, but the eggs that were in the shed also, they didn't freeze, but they killed the embryo inside. I cracked a couple of the seven day eggs open um, and they did seem to be fertilized, but nothing had grown. Um, so I've been putting a few more eggs in since that have been laid in the warmer weather. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep an eye on them and I'm gonna see if they start to develop. If they don't, I'm gonna take that cockerel out. He is going to be going into my freezer and I'll switch him for one of my other Ixworth roosters. Oh, and before I forget, make sure you watch the video about when these guys moved in to these aviaries and I'll link that just up here. And so before the season gets too manic and there's no time to stop, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and do exactly that. Stop, sit and watch the world go by.